It's the biggest day of the year for high school basketball players around the state. State championship Saturday, games played at University of North Carolina and NC State. High school football season is moving to the playoffs this week. Wallace Rose Hill is expecting a long run. Well, they're expecting a number of long runs, actually, from star running back Kanye Roberts. Pirates kicked off their football season tonight. They were taking on App State here, a packed place on the whole lower level. ECU football headed to Memphis this weekend in search of its sixth win, the magic number for teams to be bowl eligible. ECU homecoming gave the fans plenty to cheer about, plenty of scoring, tons of points, and for the first time since 2014, three wins in a row overall. They had to cancel the game this morning, a devastating blow for ECU, who has just had a fantastic season come to an end a day early. Will Bland, the coach of J.H. Rose, he's right here. He's ready to play some football. <laughs> hey, ready to get a song, try to represent the East and try to bring back a little victory. Then. Who are all going to jump with us in about three, two, one, let's go. Let's go. Ooh, there they go. When COVID came, I'm like, ah, oh, we can't do any of that stuff because such a distance, we'd stay in our houses. How get back into basketball again? The pandemic paused all activities for Special Olympians. Special Olympics is a big part of a lot of our athletes' lives, and uh, to have that shut down due to COVID, and just we had to take a lot of extra precautions with our population. When the protocols changed, they resumed sports. One of the first events that they had was flag football. So they, they got out open field, started running around, talking to each other, talking to the volunteers, the coaches. It has also allowed a group of basketball players from Pitt County to represent North Carolina at the USA Special Olympic Games in Florida this June. They surprised the team with the news. We told them on Zoom uh, about six months ago that they qualified for this trip and they were ecstatic. I was like, yes, I was screaming. After the Zoom, I was like, thank you for the opportunity to go anywhere because during COVID, you can't go anywhere. And I was so happy. Happiness has multiplied as they got back to the gym. Oh, it's been awesome. Um, it's been challenging. They were a little out of shape. We've had about 40 practices so far. Watching them come out every day with energy. They really want to play. They love the game of basketball. Players like Denage Hale. Competition, because I'm really a competitive person. And Nick Pitts. Coach asked me if I can join the basketball team. And I, could, and I said, sure, I would love to. And now i am become a real pro professional basketball player. United in a common goal to face 16 teams in an eight-day tournament. We're going to go on it and we're going to like Lions. You got the energy, you got, you're working hard, you break a sweat. Something none of them would have thought possible a year ago. Just have fun with it. You know, it's, it's an opportunity that comes once in a lifetime. Uh, so don't take it for granted and make the most out of it that they can and just enjoy the trip. Team North Carolina and a chance to medal together. We're going to win a gold medal and we're going to be proud. The community has really helped the team afford this trip. They are still fundraising by selling shirts and hoodies and such, and you can contact the Drew Steel Center for more information on how to help. See it, you follow it, and shoot it. When you grow up in a hunting family, I naturally just kind of took into that. Your dad is a former member of the Navy shooting team. When I first started shooting, competing, shooting registered targets, uh, I made the All-Navy team in 2003 and then shot for the Navy until 2011 when I got out. And your name comes from a walk through the World Registered Target Championship vendor row. One of the manufacturers called Briley. My wife looks at me and says, that'd be a pretty name for a little girl. And I said, sold. It was only a matter of time before Briley Kohler became interested in shooting. So we shot and my scores were pretty well for my first time ever doing that. And I just remember leaving the field and being like, wow, that was so much fun. Took to it like a duck to water. And so every weekend thereafter, we kept going to the range, kept going to the range. Then she kept getting better and better. With no push from her dad, the obsession became hers as well. Just started getting better and better and better. And slowly but surely, I was ready to start shooting register targets. Riley began competing this year. I don't really know if I'm ready. Like, I, I think I should take another year to keep practicing. I realize it doesn't really matter that much. It just matters what you gain from it. Traveling all over the United States in search of better scores. And going to all the bigger shoots and seeing people win medals. It's kind of like, I'm so hungry for one of those. I want one of those. A drive which earned her national recognition. Won a pin at the U.S. Open. And a spot at the World Championship in San Antonio, Texas. When you get there, it's huge. There's 50 fields. There's up top, on the middle, and on the bottom. 
and you have to drive to all of them. There's long roads to get there. There's a whole facility. There's a museum. No unreasonable expectations there. Just show up and do her best. The whole week that we were there, every day, I just had more of a drive, more of a hunger to get something. Her best was incredible. There were only four registered rookie shooters at that shoot. There were over 600 registered shooters. Riley ended up with three medals there, a bronze, a silver, and a big gold. I told her, I said, I think you won E-Class. You need to get down to the stadium field so they can announce you and take your picture. And she actually stole my rental car and took off and went down there. So I raced down there. It didn't really hit me how excited I was until they called my name and just it was like slow motion running down the steps of the bleachers and running out onto the field and standing there. All of it achieved alongside her dad. It's very special to me being able to do out, go out there and shoot with him and it's not just like a, he's coaching me it's kind of mutual now. ECU says this offseason off the field has been one of the toughest they've had to deal with. Before every game, I always used to try to find my parents, and I knew my mom was always right above the third base dugout with the families where the bleachers, and I always knew my dad was in right field. I remember looking up at my mom, and she had her sunglasses on, and I could tell she was upset just by her body language, and then I looked out to right field and didn't see him, and came in the locker room, and I lost it. ECU freshman All-American infielder Zach Agnos lost his dad Nico this fall to COVID-19. Pirate Nation and others raised over $50,000 to help his family, but it was the way they responded in person, which is what makes this program so special. It, there's no textbook. There's no there's no uh, manual. You don't know what to do. And um, throughout that situation, I just, uh, after he got off the phone with his mom, of course, we were hugging and crying in my office. And I said, uh, hey, uh, go get your cell phone and stuff. And, and I'm putting you in my car. That's all I knew what to do is to drive into Northern Virginia. You know, sometimes you just need to be there for people. You don't need to talk. You don't need to say anything. Every level of the Pirates program stepped up for their teammate when he was down. He's my roommate, so we've, uh, we're always pretty close, but, uh, you know, I think the team came together when that happened, and, uh, you know, we helped him through a tough time. From the fall game at Liberty. Phil, our janitor, gave Turner a big hug, and, man, he gave me one of the biggest hugs I've ever received and he said that he's watching just smiling and it was one of the coolest moments of my life and then go in the bathroom and I'm crying and then I walk back out and Cooch Manor sitting right there waiting for me and he gave me a big hug. Bonding moment for us because it, it brings everything into perspective that this isn't the only thing that matters like family matters more um, outside of baseball and it helps you come back into that. To going to the celebration of life. We took the team up there for on that Monday for the celebration of life and of course uh, we were crammed on a bus because uh, now it's harder to get multiple buses because of COVID and one of our freshmen got COVID and then a day later I got COVID and then Colby Bortles got COVID and COVID it, it, it was hard on me the after parts of it and plus the Nico situation but our guys did a really good job of maneuvering through it. The Pirate family is ready for baseball adversaries and whatever else life throws at them. Everybody talks about how great the fans are, how great everybody is, and how it's a family atmosphere. And I mean, that, that truly has been 100% accurate this offseason. In Greenville, Eric Gullickson. WITN Sports. The fourth round of the state football playoffs held tonight around the state. J.H. Rose upset its way there. So did Scotland, which meant the Rampants got one more home game. Well, maybe one more coming. Coach Bland told me last time they played Scotland, knocked them out of the playoffs. Cornell Powell's junior year, and he was on hand tonight. The Kansas City Chief wide receiver rooting him on. One score game, first half, Jaquarius Brown. The interception, and that is a pick six as he takes it back to the house for J.H. Rose as they go up 21-7. Scotland drives the field. R.J. Nicholson had a great game last week and a score again here. Made it 21-14, but Rose answers through the air. Will Taylor up top, Montez Green, and you got mossed. He knows it. Then Taylor hits Michael Allen. Touchdown. Three touchdowns in the game for Michael, 28-14, Rose at the half. Scotland got it back to one score as Carter Ravel is going to hit Izeem Graham. That touchdown made it 28-21, but Rose would go up for good here as Taylor hits Jaden Grimes, who gets the pylon, and J.H. Rose is moving on to the regional final. 49-28, Rampants win. Who do they play? Well, let's check it out. Jacksonville on the road, and they were... 
taking on top seed Eastern Alamance and shaking some hands and go into the action. Hunter Douglas is going to take the snap and he's going to look for a man and finds Kaysen McCauley, who's going to catch it at the 10 and takes it across the field into the end zone that put the Eagles on the scoreboard. Eastern Alamance, the top seed, looking to expand their lead as Douglas is going to drop back and look for McCauley again. This time he's in the back of the end zone and he comes down with the ball. Six more for EA. Jacksonville not letting them stop them, keep them down. Damon June, the freshman, powers it in for the score and they would come all the way back and force overtime 21-21. Let's go to overtime. Fourth down, Patello Lie is going to go for the huge stop on the goal line. They stuffed him at the one. The Cardinals get the ball in their turn. It's Josh Benton faking the handoff pitches to June, running over defenders and in for the winning score. Gets home. Jacksonville wins it in overtime, 27-21. A rematch is coming. Rose and Jacksonville. In Pinetown, the Northside Panthers hosted the Pender Patriots in the conference round of the fourth round and first quarter is where we're going to pick it up after the Panther drives around. Patriots lead 20, uh, 18 to 0 and another score coming here from Antonio B and Panthers would get the ball for the second quarter and they were unable to produce a score. Pender would get a turnover and they would turn it into a touchdown. Again it was B going up the field and in as the Patriots went up 26 to 0. Northside wasted no time with the ball then. They charged down the field, touchdown for senior Mitch Godley, and they were trailing 26 to 7 on the board. Pender just kept coming. The Panthers came back, but Pender just too much in the end as they would hold on and they advanced 34 28 the final score. In the other Class A game, Tarboro hosting Northampton County in the other Class 1A game. And you know the Vikings, they know what they're doing out there. Tobias Joyner, he knows what he's doing too. Hand off up the middle, barely touched. And he's off to the races, and we've seen him do that a lot this year. Six, nothing Tarboro. NH on the Tarboro 11, Anthony Harding the keeper. He'll take it down the left side for the touchdown. Two-point conversion was good, and they took the lead 8-6. to six. Tarboro on the NH9, handoff goes to Joyner again, pinballing through the defenders, punches it in for six, two-point conversion, good. Tarboro up 14-8. to eight. Jump to the fourth quarter, Tarboro looking to pull away, Vikings on the one-yard line, QB keeper for Omari and Lewis, touchdown made it 21-8. to eight. Then Joyner doing it again, breaking a tackle, another six, 27-8.